Radiant team pick. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're back and we're live with game number one of Virtus Pro versus Next KZ. It's a best of three. The draft well underway. Sorry for missing most of it, guys, but we are live now and. We have one pick left. The big thing for me, guys, is that Virtus Pro have once again given away a Wisp. Uh, but I feel if you're going to give away a Wisp, they have got a pretty damn good team to deal with it. Yeah, they've got one of the better ones there. Puck, hard to lock down, Lone Druid, Tanky, Gyrocopter. Immediate cooldown plus Flat Cannon can almost sort of backfire on a, a Wisp plus whatever he wants to be in. Next case, he haven't really comboed the Wisp with anything. The life Lifesteal as their last pick, I guess, is the most likely sort of here to have him roam around the map with, but it's not really the most powerful one, because Lifesteal is great at cutting distances already with phase drums build that is so popular at the moment. Yeah, we're just waiting for the last two players to select their heroes, but VP, fantastic five-man lineup, strong laning stage for them. Next KZ definitely have their options to find kills. Plenty of vehicles for the Lifestealer, lots of global gank potential, and very curious to see if they can make this work. Of course, this is your loser bracket round one match for the Group A of Corsairs Gaming <laughs> Summer Dota Tour. Oh my god, that was way harder than it needed to be. It's a $10,000 tournament, a 16-team event. One team is going home after this series. The other will straggle forward. Virtus Pro looked like an easy shoe-in to take this group, just based on the recent results and the fact that they are invited to the International 2, but or the International 3, rather. But coming up short in their first series, they'll have to do this the hard way. Yeah, they'll have to go through next KZ and then following this, the loser of IC Cup as well as uh, Rock's Kiss. So either way, they've got two matches to win. This is a team who just recently beat Alliance. And Alliance, as far as the Dota scene goes, they're on top of the world. They're on top of the Asian scene. They're on top of the Western scene. They seem somewhat unbeatable. VP managed to do it. This time around, they are playing with a standard today. Uh, this game, they've, okay, they've only got the one standard, Medved. Um, but still, they look like the normal VP as far as drafts and strategies go. He is playing one of the support roles. It probably does hurt them a little bit. But it's something which VP need to be on top for. Yeah, we'll see what they do from here. VP, strong laning stage for them. A lot of burst damage, and that's something you really want against a hero like Wisp. Even a Batrider, he jumps in, potentially could just die. If he gets a Rubik lifted, and then Gyrocopter drops a call down, a Rocket Barrage. If you're going to give away a Wisp, and if you're going to give away a Batrider, this is the kind of lineup you want. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I'm well, confused because well, you just came in on the stream and I'm like, wait, wait a second, which LD am I listening to? I was listen to them both. <laughs> they, they, they both have I such nice voices. I'm tired, LD. It was one of those you're weird... He, you're hearing LD things, is Scott. talking to me in two different places. I was hearing voices and then I was like, wait a second, which of these voices am I replying to? Because it's five in the morning, I'm getting tired. It's it's, it's been long. <laughs> I, was actually, I was actually just off getting some chocolate to try to wake myself up a bit. It's, it's not working, evidently. at least not yet. That's why, I, that's why I'm drinking Red Bull, but you'll abstain from the caffeine, you'll get a you know chocolate is a little bit, but very small. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm okay with caffeine, but I'm just not big on energy drinks. Yeah. Those things cut years off your life. Yeah, I'm, I'm probably going to die at age 28, so I've got like at least a year left here. 11 months should be good. That's right, make the most of it. We'll have a bit of a long pause, but uh, of course, this is a best of three, and it is game one, so... Looking at these two drafts, we didn't really get a chance to analyze the draft, but just the heroes that each team has. I feel VP should be able to win this laning stage fairly handily, but if they don't, or if they screw up, then next KZ could really punish them in the mid game. Yeah, the big call is whether or not they go for the offensive tri lane or not, or whether it's Lone Druid in the safe lane or in the off lane. Right now, he's picked up your standard Lone Druid items, probably will, yeah, he switches the style shield to his bear, so 
it could well be an offlane lone druid and they're just going for a little sweep through the enemy jungle at level one to do some warning mm -hmm. before going for a safe lane tri lane. It, but there's a magic stick really on Illidan, cool. so maybe they do want to tri lane this. Yeah. That's, that's an offensive tri lane kind of item. Yeah, let's see if they can make it work. On the side of next KZ, you've got your challengers. They have looked like the weakest team in the group thus far, but all it takes is one best of three win to move on to the winner, the loser bracket finals and have a shot at advancing out of Group A for the Corsair Summer Game Corsair Gaming Summer Tour 2013. Mantis will lead the way for this squad. What a fuck as well. We may have an engagement at level one. As I say that, it's the new open wound, so probably not. Reeves going to be handling the IO. Both teams eyeing each other off, but nobody coming in just yet. Really, really nice. Playing the Shadow Demon and Stallcat going to be handling the big cat, the Marana. How fitting. On the low ground, Virtus <laughs> Pro. Well, they'll work their way through, and Arrow's going to connect, but there's just no follow-up, so it's all purely for harassment. And then we've got Virtus Pro on the dire side. It'll be curious to see how this Marana picks fit, fits into the line. Virtus Pro, we're going to see Illidan playing the Gyrocopter. Mr. Arsat on the Rubik. Got the stand-in medved on the left track. They're eyeing off this trial in the bottom lane. They want to go for this room, but they're outnumbered. They've got to be careful. Oh no. It's level one open wounds, but they've gotten in range. It could be a Warcraft 3 surround. Illidan is trapped. This is not looking good. Now the rage on the lifestyle. I think he's going to go down. First blood to next KZ. And they just gave away first blood to a lineup with a wisp. This is a very bad way to start your game. Yeah, great start for next KZ. The last two players on the Virtus Pro side. We're going to have Crazy or TMW in the mid lane on Puck. And then Lone Druid in top, but... Like you said, this is the ideal start for next season as far as this game could go. And what's also great what is, is well, Tame My Wilds actually picked up a magic stick. He thought the Bat Rider was going to be here, wanted a little bit of extra regen. That is not a useful item to have against Marana. It's going to delay his bottle, and it's not going to help him to last hit at all. So this is just a small little thing, but it does go their way. It looks like next KZ have somewhat confused Virtus Pro with the lanes. Generally, I guess you, you'd figure the Marana would be your off laner, or maybe even a part of the tri lane with the lifestealer off lane, but indeed that was not the case. Yeah, this is this is a nice little start for them. The puck wasting a bit of money there. We'll have to try to get the ball as fast as possible and still cut. Murano not the best mid hero, but with the Wraith Band level one and the pooled region, his base damage suddenly get, becomes a lot easier to last hit with. Yeah, almost as good as the pucks and again, puck with a magic stick. That makes it a lot harder for him to win this matchup one v one and though the combination of all these factors, I think the Murana is actually gonna have the advantage here. Uh, as strange as that sounds, oh, maybe not the advantage, but it's certainly even, whereas normally it wouldn't even be close. We'll see a bit of a contest here for the creep camp. They have open wounds. The tether stun's there, but don't forget about Rocket Barrage. It does a lot of damage early on. Rubik lifts. Rubik stuns. Throws the Wisp back. A defensive disrupt. Dodges the split earth. Keeping him alive and up in fighting shape, but not for long. Illidan will fall. Wisp as well. A bloodbath already. Two to one your score. We're only a minute and 30 seconds in. Yeah, and DP, they're, they're thinking, oh, it's guaranteed to get this kill, but the, the first blood's already passed, so trading a gyrocopter for a support Easy. wisp is yeah. not a good trade at this point. Sure, slowing down a wisp hitting level 6 is great and all, but trading kills there, not really in their favor. They're put, they'll, they'll try to keep the pressure up here, but unfortunately, gyrocopter is only level 2 at this point. You look at the lifestealer, level 3, he's got a point in each ability, and he's got 1,200 gold. You get a pair of boots before the enemy supports have them, and the open wound nerf doesn't matter. They do go in on really, really nice. He got caught out. He gets lifted up into a splitter. Well-timed, and Virtus Pro, well, that's something they needed. They get their feet back in this game. They start to feel a little bit more seaworthy, and we'll see what they can do from here. Just some bad positioning from the Shadow Demon pays with his life. Yeah, they, they need these little pickoffs wherever they can get them, because... The two solo lanes, Lone Druid should do decently at top, but Puck, as you said, it's not going to win this lane against Marana, a lane which typically you think Puck could do fairly decently. I love how Puck's going for a straight null talisman, just to help with his last hitting. I think even uh, that's a really smart choice, even though you want to get a bottle, having this null talisman, this this one for one matchup at mid is purely going to be won or lost by how well you can last hit, so having an extra 5-6 damage can win you the lane. So really, really nice. After the death, he's decided to abandon his lane. At least for the time being, he's going to roam. He'll head towards the top lane. No boots, however. And Batrider is not yet level 6. Doesn't have a point of flame break. I'm not sure how effective this will be. Meanwhile, bottom lane, Mantis may be in trouble. They could go for a lift stun combo. It's a little bit far. Do they really try and go in KSI here? No flame break. It's just not the best engagement, I feel. They'll disrupt. Soul Catcher's available. Firefly is there. Well, they're going to die for it, but I don't know that it's going to work. There are four stacks up, but what a fuck is dropping fast to the tower? This feels ugly. This is going to be a straight feed. And KSI, he runs back into the Firefly, and he will go down. If he had just run the other way, probably would have lived. Really, really nice. Maybe even run up. 
Yeah. He, he could have. He had. A, he had a tango. He could have just. I don't even know. He tried to turn around to attack, which he didn't need to do. He yeah. should have just kept running up, use the tango, run up. But he wanted. And that turn time is so slow with the napalm, but. He had him. He outplayed. Well, he didn't really outplay the bat rider. He just baited. He baited the bat rider, and then he outplayed himself. I mean, that's where you don't have flame break. You just you can't make that kill. Not with a level two shadow demon with no boots. And well, our start bottom rune could be in trouble. Open wound stop. The orbs splash through. They start to do a bit of chip damage, but it's only level one orbs. It won't be enough. Now Illidan, a lot of rage in his eyes. He'll head towards them, but won't find it's an opening. Some some mana Rubik play. He didn't go for the lift onto the cliff. Yeah, I mean, you can still do it if it's, you kind of throw them past it, but it, yeah. I guess it generally doesn't work, so... It's tricky, but it's, it's worth going for it. If it succeeds, you've done so much critical damage, but he didn't go for it. Like you said, he's he's Mr. Arsart. He's got some manners. Yeah. Uh, he's probably wearing a tux right now, too. <laughs> Playing Dodo in a tux. I, 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 I want to see more of that. I'm hoping some of the teams start, like, suiting up at the International. Yeah. For the grand I, finals, like I, I, go, I think back to that Ace Dota tournament where they had the the player intros where they came out in suits and everything. It's pretty badass. We need we we you know I have the blazer, but we need proper tuxes. I feel uh, preferably powder blues, pinstripes galore. Next we need, time, uh, the OGN in Korea to pick up Dota two because they've got they've got the most fashionable studio in uh, oh, anywhere. That's that's very debatable. Some of those. Some of those are not fashion statements, they're just disasters. <laughs> they have some great outfits, but they have some very, very questionable ones. <laughs> and the best part is apparently it's a dictatorship. Like, the casters don't get to choose what they wear. It is literally enforced on them by OGM. That was the impression I got when I, I remember seeing Apollo and Day9 there for the WCS. They're just like, yeah, I, I didn't even realize, they had this pine cone on them, they didn't even realize it was there. They're actually thinking about going in bottom, but that would probably be a big mistake. They'll try to back off, Mantis runs into his little Wisp, now the Wisp in trouble. She might have to break the other direction, or it rather, Illidan. On the run, there's an open wound fairly soon. Six seconds to go. Reeves continue to drop lower and lower. Gyrocopter has above average move speed. There's no mana for a tether. And now Reeves is falling. He just gets the mana. Actually able to tether back and will end up living. Uh, excuse me, that's the orbs, not the tether mana. It's like, <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I, I knew what you, as soon as he said that, I knew what you were talking about. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. He didn't have enough mana for a tether. He was just trying to bait Gyrocopter as far as possible, but... He went down anyways, nice play by VP there. Right? One of the heroes was actually sticking by the life stealers in, in anticipation of that. It, it shows you how little wisp there is in Asian Dota. Life as well. oh, or they're, they're, no, they're not going, they almost do. Yeah, he's low, he's got seven stick charges. This could be a bait, he'll pop it now, open wounds on Illidan. And Illidan, well, he's got the rocket barrage, so he gets the kill anyway. He unfortunately falls, but trade for a trade. Now top lane, rotation, and the bat rider, lasso available. Throws it on KSI, I think, no, still no points in flame break, but this time, there's too much burst. KSI should be going down. He should have probably run towards his tower, but wouldn't have mattered in the end. Tries to juke, takes a fall. But yeah, it shows you how much wisp there is in Asian Dota that I couldn't even keep the spell straight. My goodness. Also, how little I've slept. Alright, that's, that's uh, beyond the summit studio. That's loser like, talk, as Merlini would say. <laughs> we don't sleep much. Yeah, that is loser talk, LD. <laughs> I've been talking about my lack of sleep as well, so we can be a bunch of old losers together. Yeah. Chat was oh, chat was quick to remind me just how old I am. That's, I love that's you guys. Nice. Play nice. You guys in chat need to be. Every time you guys tune in from chat, you guys should be wearing a tux as well. Yeah. Following nothing Mr. but Asad nothing but class steps. here. Nothing but class. So Twitch, Twitch chat classy. Good joke, LD. Yeah, so it's a pretty even game, gold experience-wise. Oh, we might have a go top. There's a disruption available to find KSI. Where's the TPs? None on the Rubik. That's the hero you really want, and KSI is left on an island. He'll go down again. They're entirely unprepared, but it's because they're killing off Mantis' bottom lane. Unfortunately, they didn't count on the infest. This creep is not in deny range. He's going to pop back out as soon as rage cools down. I'm actually not sure if he's got to wait much longer. He pops out. He rages six stick charges and he'll head for the tree line. Unfortunately, runs back in. Decides to man up. He figures he's dead. He's going to probably kill Illidan again. Needs one more tower shot. It won't be quite enough. The Reign of is making the difference there. Now take my wild. On the run, too. It's just constant, constant aggression. But Tame My Wild jumps in, drops the orb, finds a kill, and he is running circles around them. Quite a few ankles broken there. And will he even go back in? Two heroes rotating mid. It looks like they might want to make a second go in just a few moments. Nope, never mind. They'll back off. Yeah, nice play there for coming out from the puck. And so this is 
VP, they're actually not looking too good here. Lone Druid with three de deaths very early on. When you put a Lone Druid in the safe lane, you're expecting him in a, in a 1v1 matchup to get farm, get some early item progression, but a lot of smart rotations coming from next KZ put some good position as far as shutting down the Lone Druid. And it's the Bat who got the farm. 3,500 gold on him, and he's got a Blink Dagger. This is one of the fastest Blink Daggers you will ever see. Nine minutes in, level eight, has everything he needs to make a huge impact in these fights. And now VP, well, they want to play five man Dota, but when Bat has Blink, it is hard to actually group up as a unit of five. There will be a scout mid lane, a blink, a lasso. Tame My Wild's been caught, isolated and surrounded. Now they need a Tether Sun to bring him down. He orbs. The Tether Sun does not get there. And now, bottling up, phase shift not available. They do find the kill, and there's no teleport reaction. It comes right now. It's going to be a Lashrak at half HP. Arsart, well, he's going to have to run. Uh, or, excuse me, not Arsart. So used to seeing him on Lashrak, but it is Jotam the stand in. Yeah, Arrow going to go flying, looking for someone behind the tower. Ooh, Lashrak walked a bit further, could have walked into that one, but. The other big thing for VP, not only did they just lose Puck for the t second time, they've had eight deaths. Seven of those eight deaths have been on their core heroes. Three deaths on Lone Druid, three on Gyrocopter, two on the Puck. The Gyrocopter bottom isn't really farming. They've been diving that tower for kills, and Gyrocopter's been dying for them. So all their carry is not getting much farm here. And it's, of course, still game one, but it's a 500 gold lead for next KZ, a 750 experience lead. And they coil really, really nice mid. He does get tethered. Of course, the disruption's there as well. The call down comes through. Illidan Rage dropping. Illidan Storm Rage dropping low. Gets purged up. Wisp wants to auto attack him down. On the hunt is Stallcat 2. Illidan still tries to hoof it out of here. He's got call down. He's got flat cannon, but he's too low to really fight. Batrider giving chase. Wants to go for another. A blink, a flame break would end his life. Or just a blink into Firefly. Down he goes. And VP, their greedy, aggressive play. Normally, balls to the wall can work, but only if you have a decent start. They haven't. They forced the fight, and they are paying, and they are paying heavily. Yeah, next KZ didn't look too solid in their last match against Roxkiss, but here against Dyer's VP, they're showing them who's attack. the boss of the CIS Dota right now. Next KZ with an unusual Mirana solo mid and just a defensive trial lane. They've been trading as well as possible, forcing VP to overextend time and time again, and it's, it's really going well early on for next KZ. And now they're starting to get some core items up. Beyond the Blink Dagger, Marama's got Phase, Wraith Band, Bottle, and Wand. And now you can work towards something a little bit bigger for her. The Yasha, the Drums if you'd like, anything to start getting involved in these fights. Mantis, Drums coming soon as well. Bottom lane, we've had an initiation. There's your relocate into an instant kill. And tethered up together, the Wisp and the Shadow Demon might be going back home soon. They did use a lasso, but they get another kill. When you start slow against Batrider, Lifestealer, and Wisp, it is very hard to find the farm to come back. Yeah, it, it really is. These heroes are going to keep on punishing. We're going to see some life sealer and fest bombs here and there with the bat rider. Marana Invis has been used as an initiation skill, and then you have, of course, the Wisp relocate, the famous combo. He doesn't have a good partner to sort of combo with. Um, mostly, it'll be life sealer. Although life sealer can just go around with the bat rider, maybe even just the support go around with the Wisp Shadow Demon. But it's just this great global ganking presence, which is just going to prevent Dyer's Lone Druid from getting farmed to get back attack. in this game, and Gyrocopter as well, being constantly punished. He's he's really under-leveled as well, not just under farm. He's only level six and a half. Yeah, it's, you run that aggressive try lane, you have the start they did. You expect him to easily push down a tower, keep the pressure up, delay the Wisps levels, but they ended up giving up kills. They ended up trading instead of just taking a kill when they could. I feel if they were just more patient, they would have easily gotten kills and not died, but... Overextended a few times, didn't settle for just one kill here or there. Wanted two or three, and well, now we find ourselves in a very unpleasant situation. Also, again, it goes back to the early game where Arsart didn't have a TP when maybe he could have teleported in to help save the Lone Druid. They haven't really been prepared for Next KZ's aggression. It's like they just expect a Next KZ to roll over, and Next KZ is putting up a hell of a fight. Yeah, Next KZ, Batrider actually sort of searching this bottom lane. Not going to find anyone there as VP. They've sacked this tower for the most part, but they don't know if they've the actually sacked They'll see the Firefly now, under attack. and they'll probably just sack this tower. They want to try to find a trade elsewhere. It's going to be top lane where they look for that trade. And well, with the Lone Druid, they've got decent pushing power, but this is a very underfarmed Lone Druid, underleveled and underfarmed Gyrocopter. If fallen. next case you want, they can get top and defend this as well, but they may just go for two towers bottom. You know, I'm really liking the item selection. The early phase drums and the life stealer is standard, or treads drums is pretty standard, but it's just an item that lets them snowball a bit and keep on fighting aggressively. They're actually posting up. This Wisp is very far out. Can always tether back, but not if she gets chain stunned. Well, that was definitely an overextension. 
thought she could, or thought it could just tether away, but Reeves, you were wrong. And that's what VP need to get back in the game. They'll be able to push the tower off of this. End of the day, they have Lone Druid and they have a point in Edict. Towers are going to drop if next KZ make mistakes. Next KZ can't afford to do silly things like that. Mirana and Bat actually give up trying to counter push bottom lane. They're going to try and hold this top lane. There's your Mirana ult, they're going in top lane, a blink, and a lasso. No, what a fucker! Actually gets it off, but not before a Rubik lift. Arsart does help turn the fight around.